Okay guys, I hope you're having a great day. Um, please fill in your notes organizer as I go through this lecture video. Today's topic is genetics, how traits are passed from parent to offspring. So we can't talk about genetics without first talking about this guy, Gregor Mendel. He was an Austrian monk, he was born in 1822, and he actually worked in the gardens of the monastery, and he really enjoyed that and started to notice that there were these certain traits from the parent plant that would appear in the baby plant, and he really wanted to better understand how that worked. So this is why we consider him the father of the genetics. He really was the first to study how traits are passed from parent to offspring. So that is called genetics, which is the scientific study of heredity, how traits are passed down. His most famous work is, of course, the work he did with pea plants. And the reason he chose pea plants is because they reproduce quickly and they produce a large amount of offspring, meaning he could get a, a great deal of data in a very short period of time. So as he's growing his pea plants, he noticed that Pea plants have seven observable characteristics and that each characteristic has two possible traits. This is the difference between a gene and an allele, which we'll get into more later in the PowerPoint. So a characteristic is plant height. The possible traits would be long or short stems. A characteristic would be seed color. The possible traits would be yellow or green seeds. So choose a couple of these characteristics and traits and Fill them in under number two on your notes organizer. Here are some of his drawings and then some of those characteristics and traits that I was talking about on the other page. Okay, so the first thing that Mendel realized he could do was that he could control plant pollination or fertilization, whatever you want to call it. He literally could take the pollen from one plant and put it onto the flower of another plant and control the traits of what plants are grown. So he basically grew pea plants that were purebred for each trait. That is called true breeding. When true breeding plants fertilize or self-fertilize or when uh, purebred plants self-fertilize, they always produce offspring with that same trait. This is, you know this, you already know this, you know that if a Labrador is bred with a purebred Labrador, they are only going to produce puppy Labradors. You're not going to suddenly have a Chihuahua, right? This is exactly what he was doing with pea plants. So he took a self-pollinating plant that was purebred for purple flowers and he pollinated it with itself and realized that the offspring would always have purple flowers. He did the same thing for white flowers. A self-pollinating plant purebred for white flowers will always produce offspring with white flowers. So this is all under number three in your organizer. Okay, now his question was, I know that if I breed purple and purple, I get purple, right? If they're purebred. If I breed purebred white and white, I get white. His question was, what if I take those purebred plants and cross them with one another? That's called cross-pollination. So what if I crossed purple purebred purple flower pea plants with purebred white flower pea, pea plants. It's kind of a tongue twister. Try and say that yourself. So we call those parent plants, those purebred plants, the P generation, and P stands for parental. So for each cross of the plant parents, Mendel cross-pollinated plants who were true breeding with opposite traits. So the pea generation for one of his experiments consisted of a purebred purple flower plant and a purebred white flower plant. So this is all under number four. So he allowed those to cross-pollinate. The offspring that were produced from that cross-pollination are called the F1 generation. F stands for filial, which just literally means offspring, son or daughter. So plants in the F1 generation are no longer purebreds because they have parents that are purebred for different traits. So we call them hybrids now. So this would be like if a schnauzer was purebred schnauzer was crossed with a purebred poodle. You would end up with a hybrid dog called a schnoodle. So what do you think Mendel expected to see when he crossed a purebred purple flower plant with a purebred white flower plant? He probably expected to see plants that were maybe um, some purple, some white, or maybe they were like mixed between purple and white, but he didn't ex expect to see what he got as his results. His results was that every single offspring plant in the F1 generation had purple flowers. So let's summarize what he's done up until this point. He has cross-pollinated 
purebred purple flowers with purebred white flowers, and surprisingly, in the F1 generation, he got all purple flowered plants. You, as a freshman in high school biology, can probably tell me why that is. So he realized that there was this stronger trait that sort of won out every single time in the F1 generation. So what I just told you was that purple flower color won over white flower color. When he did smooth seeds versus wrinkled seeds, smooth seeds always appeared in the F1 generation. So why do you think that is? What do we call it a trait that is stronger? This is where we learn the terms dominant and recessive. So traits can be either dominant or recessive. He called the trait that appeared in the F1 generation, purple flowers in this case, or the stronger trait, he called that the dominant trait. Mendel called the trait that didn't appear in the F1 generation, the weaker trait, white flowers in this case, the recessive trait. So then he asked himself, well, what happens if I let those F1 generation plants self-pollinate? So he, he was asking, like, if I took those purple flower plants that appeared in the F1 generation and I self-pollinated them, he probably expected to see that he was going to have all purple flower plants, right? You're crossing purple with purple, so he expected to get purple. But what he saw was that he ended up with about 75% purple flowers and about 25% with white flowers. So that would be a ratio of 3 to one. So in the F2 generation, you had 75% with the dominant trait, 25% that expressed the recessive trait. So on your notes organizer, um, draw this picture under 5D and label the, the P, F1, and F2 generations. And let's bring this back in term of dogs, because that's something you understand. Purebred Labradors, bred with purebred Labradors, only ever have Labrador offspring. But if I breed a purebred uh, Schnauzer with a purebred Poodle, you're going to end up with a hybrid Schnoodle. So the F1 generation would be like breeding a Schnoodle with a Schnoodle. Are you going to have all Schnoodle offsprings? You're actually going to end up having offspring that have some characteristics of Schnauzers and some characteristics of Poodles in the F2 generation. Okay, so this is summarizing what I just said. About 25% of the flowers in the F2 generation were white. That's the recessive trait. So even though the F1 generation looked like purebred purple plants, they were purple on the outside, they carried the trait for white flowers somewhere in the inside. So that, that recessive trait was sort of hidden. So now we're going to get into the genetics of it all. Like, how do we end up with traits that are dominant and recessive, and where does that recessive gene hide when the dominant trait is expressed? So, hopefully you know the definition for a gene by now, but a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for a particular protein, and the protein is ultimately what results in the trait. So each characteristic, pod color, seed color, um, hair color, eye color, skin color, that is controlled by one gene. So each characteristic is controlled by one gene. But remember, each characteristic has multiple forms. So the characteristic was pod color, but the different traits are yellow color and um, green color. So for example, there is a gene that controls plant height. There's a gene that controls seed color. There's a gene that controls flower color, so on and so forth. But the different forms of the gene are called alleles. Remember, you get genes from both your mother and your father. So your father could give you the allele for blue eyes, your mother might give you the allele for brown eyes, but both are on the gene for eye color. So each alternative or different form of a gene is called an allele. This is under number six on your notes organizer. So here's some examples. The plant height gene has two alleles, tall and short. The flower color gene has two alleles, purple and white. The seed texture gene has two alleles, wrinkled and smooth. So Mendel was able to figure this out. He determined that inheritance is caused by what he called factors, which we now know to be genes that are passed on from one generation to the next. Those genes can, be, uh, can come in different forms, and those are called alleles. Now, the law of dominance, which is what Mendel sort of came up with, um, just simply says that some alleles are dominant and some alleles are recessive. Very simple law of dominance. Some alleles are dominant, some alleles are recessive. 
So here are our chromosomes, homologous chromosomes, right? You get one set from your mother, one set from your father. And let's say that on this chromosome, we have the gene for flower color. Okay, here's the gene for flower color. Maybe the mother flower plant gave the allele for purple flowers. The father pea plant gave the allele for white flowers. So what would be the result of this offspring plant that has an allele for purple flowers and an allele for white flowers? Alle purple is dominant over white. So if this was the case, that offspring plant would have purple flowers. Now let's back up and talk about this. How do we get those genes from our parents? This is all a result of a process we talked out about many times ago. The only thing you get from your parent is from the mother, egg, from the father, sperm. So how do you produce egg and sperm so that they can give their genes to their offspring? This is a result of meiosis. Do you remember talking about that? That's number six H on your notes organizer. Okay, two other conclusions that Mendel came up with from his research were the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment. So the law of segregation simply says that those two factors, the alleles, um, get separated during the formation of gametes during meiosis. So that makes sense. We have our diploid cell that's carrying the allele for you know something dominant, big T, let's say tall, and then carrying the allele for short, little t. And during meiosis, we're producing haploid cells. So some of those cells are going to carry big t's, and some of those cells are going to carry little t's. The law of independent assortment says that those alleles for different characteristics or genes are distributed to gametes independently. And that's a result of crossing over, that's a result of how the chromosomes line up along the middle, but basically it means that one allele is independent on another allele. The allele for seed texture isn't dependent on the allele for plant height. Okay, so write down the definitions on your notes organizer for law of segregation and law of independent assortment under number seven. And then label this picture. So we have our F1 generation, these are our hybrids, and during segregation, that occurs during meiosis, you could even label meiosis there, we're producing gametes that can carry the different alleles, and then they can combine in different ways in the F2 generation. Now, this looks very complicated, doesn't it? I'm going to teach you a way to represent this information in a much simpler form. So ultimately, these alleles are what create the diversity among us. We can have millions of combinations of alleles, and that's why none of us look exactly the same. So here are some definitions. Copy these down under number eight. Alleles are what's represented with letters when we do Punnett squares, so like a big B, a little b, those would be representing alleles. So brown hair might be big B, little b might be blonde hair. So alleles are represented with letters, dominant and recessive, you know what those are, and then genotype and phenotype. Genotype is just like what it sounds like, the type of gene that you have, the allele makeup. These are like your letters, big T, big T, big T, little t, or little t, little t. And then phenotype is easy to remember because phenotype starts with PH, and that's the physical appearance of the trait, so what you actually look like. So if your genotype was big B, big B, your phenotype would be that you have brown hair. Or let's say um, your genotype was little B, little B, your phenotype would be that you have blonde hair. If the genotype is made up of alleles that are identical, um, th that genotype is said to be homozygous. If the genotype is made up of two different alleles, that genotype is said to be heterozygous. The word part homo means same, the word part hetero means different. So big B, big B, big T, big T, big P, big P would be homozygous dominant, little b, little b would be homozygous recessive, and then little big B, little b would be heterozygous. Big T, little t, two different alleles, that would be heterozygous as well. So copy down those definitions and make sure you include some examples as well. Okay, so there's a funny picture for Gregor Mendel giving peace a chance since 1856. It's a play on words. We used to say, you know, give peace a chance. He's been given peace a chance since 1856. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about are Punnett squares, which basically just lets us illustrate how traits can be passed down from parent to offspring, what combination of alleles you can get based on the genotypes of the parents. So I'm going to let you fill in this information. Um, but basically, we are going to talk about this in class because I could see why it would be confusing. 
So here's the Punnett square for two parents that are both hybrids, big T, little t, and these are the percentages of the phenotypes. And these are the percentages of the genotypes.